Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Here's an image of Old Faithful from Christmas Day. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and say there was only seven eruptions in total of Old Faithful. It's hard to keep track of what's going on there at Yellowstone with so much censoring happening. This image here is taken from stills captured from the static cam there at Old Faithful. Besides the live webcam not working here, you can see many monitors have stopped working. Yeah, a big problem. In the middle, Little West Thumb and Teton Pass. You know, one of the few that I could get um, to download the earthquake activity. You can see here at uh, the borehole, this is a very deep well at Yellowstone Lake. Lots of shaking been going on there at the lake. And uplift has been going on also. Here we have the monitor for Yellowstone Lake, the borehole, and showing the uplift that's been going on. Um, you can see around the 23rd, um, lots of dots, lots of shaking, and uplift. X is north, bottom, Y is east. This is for the last seven days. And yeah, you can see how it's been jumping around there for the last seven days. And then the last 30 days, yeah, north was going down, but east has been rising. And we'll come down here to the disk. The University of Utah was told that they need to monitor what's going on at Yellowstone more closely. They need to put in more boreholes, and they need to have more monitors. Well, it's hard to do when they're shut down. Look at that. So we'll go back over here. This here is the borehole for Grant. Um, it's a very deep well under the ground. Grant is kind of southwest along Yellowstone Lake. Again, lots of dots means lots of shaking for the last week. And I've talked about Grant. Look at that. The uh, magma under the ground, they're tracking what it's doing under the ground, is traveling east, and it's also moving horizontally. Those of you that have followed me, um, we'll know that. And here we got for the last 30 days. Yeah, been breathing and shaking. Look at that. Each dot would be an earthquake. Let's go back up to the last week, which of course they're not reporting. Here we have an earthquake 13 minutes after midnight. This is today. Here we have um, the borehole at Yellowstone Lake, Little West Thumb. And also at um, the promontory. It registered at all three. And when they're in red, you guys know that, that follow me. When they're in red, it means um, it's a significant enough earthquake for the uh, geologist to come in and review it. Let's go down here to what it was showing when I pulled the files. Okay. So we got one. Let's see. We got one in red right there at 15.08 universal time. Notice here the line of melt. 15.08 we got an earthquake at the promontory. Uh, it only shows up as a little blip at um, West Thumb and then also as a little blip at the borehole. But notice the line of melt we got way up here on both of those. 17.37 at the promontory. Uh, West Thumb and the borehole really doesn't show much. Let's take a look at some of these others. Okay, let me close this out. And we'll pull it up a little bit. Yeah, lots in red right there. Marked in red. And let's look at the signature. Yeah. See, none of these earthquakes they are reporting. That is definitely an earthquake. And let's take a look at this one. Take a look at its signature. And let's come up a little bit. Yeah, over here, yeah, magma was on the move. The thickening of the lines, I talked about that. There's the line of melt. And let's come up over here. Just kind of jump around. Uh, 2106. And let's come over here. 2106, there was an earthquake there at West Thumb. 
Look at its signature. It's got a P wave on it. Here it is at uh, the borehole at Yellowstone Lake. That's up by the fishing bridge. And, oops, wrong, wrong line. There you go. And then the promontory. What was interesting about the promontory is as this earthquake came in. Look at this. Now here is an area using Google Earth called the Promontory Tip, Promontory Bay, the Promontory. Over here would be West Thumb. And then the monitor for Yellowstone Lake would be up over here by the Fishing Bridge. Yeah, I wish I had access to other monitors. Um, but yeah, the censoring, they're blaming it on winter. And yeah, they don't want to get out there in the cold and um, brush the snow off or install batteries or power up for the live webcam. How convenient. Now, you know that there's that large crack down at the bottom of Yellowstone Lake um, where there has been um, rhyolite trying to break through to the surface. And you can see the thickening of the lines here. Yeah. I'll just jump around on some of these earthquakes. Um, yeah, it makes it hard to make a report to see what's going on unless there's something very significant happening. Um, but I think that's the whole point of not showing us what's going on there. Again, over here is the borehole for Yellowstone Lake. And you can see all the ones that are marked in red. This is for the last 24 hours. And, okay, we'll go over here to um, Little West Thumb or West Thumb. And we'll come over here. See how they thicken up? Sorry, got some data missing here. So the crack were the rhyolites trying to come up. The dike intrusion. It hasn't broken through yet. Is somewhere through this area here. There is a deep canyon there where they have spreading. I've talked about the spreading of Yellowstone Lake. Uh, that canyon is about 390 feet deep. And there was one image I sh found of Yellowstone Lake uh, showing this magma that's trying to come up at the bottom of the lake. And I'll pull that up. And I'll pull it over here so you can see the other one. Make it a little bit smaller for you. I can get both the images in together. There you go. And here's another image. Now this is from 2008 and 2009 of that spreading. Um, they had proposed at one time they were going to put monitors at the bottom of the lake. I don't think they ever did. Um, yeah, but anyways, we can see the spreading and the assumed area of where that crack is at. The dike intrusion of the rhyolite. Now, you know that rhyolite is highly explosive. And this area here was the uh, most recent swarm of earthquakes that they had. Yeah, another sign of spreading in the uplift of the rhyolite. At about 12.30, 12.34, there was some more intrusion of magma that came in. Uh, let me go over here to this one right here. West Thumb and Teton, or the Promontory, I should say. I almost said the Teton Pass. Here's the most recent earthquake when I pulled the files at 726 Universal Time. Now that would be this one down here at um, the Promontory. And let me go back another four hours. Okay, there we go. We got another one over here. Hold on. There's actually three three of them right there. I'll pull the, well, I'll pull the first one too. Add that in. There's that. Not being reported. And we'll pull that one too. No P wave. So these are locally um, 
or local earthquakes, I should say. And going back another four hours, it was fairly quiet. You can see that there. They got one small quake there, right there. And we'll go back another four hours. There we go. We got one small quake there. There's lots of little stuff. We'll pull this here too. Extract that so you can see it. Yeah, see that? Harmonic tremors. And we'll go back another four hours. There we go. Let me pull this down. Well, can you see that one? I'll extract that one. This one down here is uh, the promontory. See all those? Um, these would be considered small microquakes. And then going back another four hours, let's pull this here. Yeah, magma on the move. And we'll pull this over so you can see the other earthquakes. Not as large as what we were having during that earthquake swarm, but um yeah definitely still still having a lot of activity like i said it's really hard to get a sense of what's going on of course sawtooth still very active the most recent was 2.2 and a 2.3 when they have the monitors all shut down look at that um heaven lake see that um purple mountain western boundary and it, you know it looks like a lot of them were were showing activity you know i had mary lake up for a while and that too got shut down you can see magma intrusion earthquake marked in red the monitor at grant village was shut down here you can see the time I wanted to pull those earthquakes, but I couldn't because it shut down. The tilt data for the Norris Geyser Basin. This is borehole 950. Again, lots of dots means lots of shaking. Top is north, bottom is east. Last seven days. And each dot would be an earthquake. And then the last 30 days. And then the Madison River area, this comes from a bore hole. And these are always a day behind for the last seven days. All the earthquakes there at Madison River. And then um, the last 30 days, yeah, we got uplift. Yep. Another monitor for the Norris Geyser Basin area, borehole 205, last seven days. And then the last 30 days, top is north, bottom is east. See how the magma's flowing eastward? Look how it's getting wider here, spreading out more. You know, any volcano can erupt without any warning. They're hoping, they believe, that there'll be earthquakes prior to an eruption. But how are they going to know about these smaller earthquakes if they have the monitors shut down. And then I was wondering this uh, budget bill, um, the 5,000 plus pages, where in that is buried the budget for Yellowstone? How much money is Yellowstone going to be allocated this coming year? Now, I did find one paper about what they request and it looks like next year 2021 they're requesting less money than um that they have you know in years past now this would be for all the national parks here in the united states request for operations is 2.5 billion dollars it says including uh 326.9 million for resource stewardship including 4.0 million uh, to mitigate wildland fire risk 
to the national park infrastructure and then it goes on um what for visitor centers uh 243.2 million dollars 366.2 million dollars for park protection and i'll give you a link to this if you want to read about it here we have the budget for yellowstone for full-time employees uh we got 313 here, 528 there. I imagine that would include part-time. Um, is this the cost? Uh, 35687 Looks like we got a minus for next year. Going to be less employees working at the park. Um, yeah, so I'll let you figure that out. Yeah, they got cutbacks. But Yellowstone has... The most employees, full-time employees, uh, let's see, um, yeah, I'll show you the other ones for employees. Let me go back down here because they had Yosemite underneath it, 217. Um, I imagine that's probably full-time and part-time. And Yosemite is going to have less, too. So we got budget cuts going on. And we'll go down here through some of these other parks and employees. But Yellowstone and Yosemite have the most employees of all our national parks. So of all their employees that they have working there, they can't keep the uh, cameras up and running. Uh, they can't do the repairs to get the monitors for earthquake monitoring up and running. I thought that was interesting. We have another page here about budget justification. $4,104,444.2018-2019. Uh, it went down to uh, $2,219,000. It does not have... Um, 2020 or 2021. In uh, 2019, the National Park Service awarded contracts for disposal of surplus assets for the Grand Teton National Park along the Appalachian Trail, as well as the removal of obsolete housing units in Yellowstone National Park among its owned and managed assets. The National Park disposed of 187 buildings and 245 structures of the 187 buildings 30 contributed to the department uh, reduce a footprint goal it says structures for the highest priority to defend against for wildfire they have 40 structures listed for yellowstone so you just might find that page interesting yeah yesterday it got a little dirty there at Old Faithful, and I'll run it a little bit more. But that's all I have for you right now. If any thoughts or comments or questions, please put it down below. Thank you for watching. Please stay safe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.